Hey Masters, welcome back to your media. Today we're gonna talk about authentication in Playwright and to be specific, this basic concept that is basically how to handle shared account in all tests. What it means? Uh, well, this is a recommended approach for tests without server side state. Uh, authenticate once in the setup project, we're gonna save the authentication state and then we're gonna reuse it in each test already authenticated. If you are more familiar with Cypress, it is kind of a Cypress session stuff, right? And I wanna show you how you can do it with Playwright, okay? Uh, let's go, let's take a look of how it works. All right, Masters, the website that I'll be using for this testing or this demo is gonna be demoqa.com slash login, okay? It is a pretty simple login page for a bookstore, okay? So if I enter here a valid username and password, I'll be able to be logged in in the application. My username is John Media, okay? And the password in my case is test with a T in uppercase, one, two, three, four, and an asterisk. You can create your own user using this new user button, but I'll be clicking on login just to show you that it is working. You can see the username over here, John Media, and also I have a logout button over here display. That's the main goal of the test demo. I'm gonna show you how you can do the login process and then share this login status between different tests. And that's the goal of the video. Let's take a look of how we can do it. Let's take a look of the official documentation just to give you a couple of insights about this. So when to use this, when you can imagine all your tests running at the same time with the same account without affecting each other. To use this, we need to make sure that we don't have like a dependent tests because we can mess our test environment and that's important to notice, right? And then we have a when not to use it. A well, your test modifies server side state. For instance, one test check the rendering of the setting page while the other test is changing the setting and you run tests in parallel. In this case, this tests must use different accounts, like different roles or something, right? And your authentication is browser specific, okay? That's beautiful. All right, masters, the first thing that we have to do in order to implement this basic shared account in all tests concept uh, is to create this beautiful file under the folder tests. The name of the file is out.setup. And if you're using TypeScript, you are gonna use TS. And if you are using JavaScript like myself, it is gonna be a JavaScript uh, file, all right? Uh, we're gonna be importing a couple of constants, the setup and the expect from Playwright test, as always. Uh, or it is required in this example, actually. Then we have a constant named out file. This is gonna be a place where we're gonna have a user.json file. And here we're gonna have information related with the cookies and the local storage of the application once we are logged in, in in it, okay? I just wanted to let you know that. And you're gonna see how it works in a few seconds. So stay with me, please. All right, then I created a method here named setup. Okay, and well, I, I call that authenticate by UI in this case, all right? Because you can do it by API as well. So I call a couple of parameters here in a, well, in my test, I'll be using page because I'll be using this fixture, all right? And also I call this test information. I'm gonna let you know why in a few seconds, okay? You can see a couple of uh, constants here as well, user and password. I'll be getting the user and the password from our playwright.config.js, okay? You can see that in my projects, I created a new project here named setup, okay? It's gonna be finding or looking for the setup.js file, this one, okay? And using the parameters here in the use, you can see that I created a user and a password and actually, well, here we have the credentials. This is not a recommended approach. Actually, the recommended approach is to use like a environment variables for this, right? Actually, if you look in my channel, let me show you this. If you go to YouTube, you look for Gmedia, Media, Playwright, and Parameters, you're going to look, find this improve your testing workflow. Here you can see the last section of the video that env integration or environment variables and you're gonna know how to handle a uh, well secrets actually in your playwright uh, configuration right but in my case i'll be just for the demo using the username over here as a string and the password as a string okay beautiful guys so now that you know that i have this 
username and password set up in my playwright.config.js, well, it is pretty easy to understand that I'll be getting that from the test information parameter that I'll, I'll, I'm calling from the setup project over here. So I'm just looking for the test info project use and user. Why is the meaning of that? Because, well, here is the setup project. Okay. This is the property use and under use, I have user. So I'm just accessing that value from this, um, from this object. Okay. So I'm getting the user and I'm getting the password. Now that I have the values, basically I'm going to the demo QA slash login page. I am filling the username and the password. Well, with given the values from, uh, from the playwright config.js that I just explained, I'm clicking on the login button, right? And then I'm just waiting for the page demo QA.com slash profile works. And also I'm just expecting to have the join media um, what well, kind of validation here, just to make sure that this join media exists once I'm logged in in the bookstore. Okay. And then the most important part here, guys, is the, that we need to save the storage state. Okay. And where we're going to save it basically in the out file that I declared before, which is the user, that JSON that I have over here. Okay. Just Keep that, that idea in your mind, guys. I'm going to show you in a few seconds how it works, but this is the, like the rationale under my, or the, my thought process of this, right? So, okay. Now that we know this guys, I think that we need to, ex I need to explain you how to configure your project or playwright.config.ts file to what well, expect to set up the project and then run the rest of the tests using this dependency. Okay. So let's take a look of how it works. All right, masters. The next step that we have to do is to configure the playwright.config.ts if you're using TypeScript or JS if you're using JavaScript. In my case, as you remember, I'm using the JS version of this framework. In the future, if you want to, let me know in the comment section if you want to have a full video about how to integrate a playwright with TypeScript and some interesting stuff that I can share with you if you're interested, right? But let's take a look at this. Okay. The first thing that we have to do is create the project name setup. That's something that I just showed you before because I needed to explain to you how to send parameters to, a, to our project and the, to the setup um, file here, right? All right. But then once you have this setup project in your configuration file, you need to set a dependency for the different or, or for the other, the other projects that you have. For instance, in my case, I have the project Chromium and I have the project Firefox. So in order to be locked in, in every single test when I'm running Chromium or Firefox, I'll be setting the dependency setup over here. Okay. That's important. I'll be using the dependency of the project setup. So it is going to happen at the beginning of every single test, or actually it is going to be a dependency. It is going to be run once. And then we have the local storage set and we're going to share the login uh, status for every single one. Okay. Then also it is important to show you that I'll be using, or actually I'll be sending under the object use a new property named storage state. And this storage state is going to be located at the user.json file that I created before under that out folder user.json. Here, this is important. If you don't set this storage state property in your use um, configuration, it is not going to work. Okay. So I have created three different configurations under this particular config file. The setup project, I created the dependency of the setup, right? And then I created the property storage state to use the user.json file that I created before in the setup process, right? To save the, let me show you this, the storage state. Okay, masters, I think I'm not missing anything. It is time to run our demo and show you that this is working fine. Okay, so let's do it. All right, masters, let me show you how it is going to work for you. So I'm running here the terminal. I hope that you can see it. I think my face can be in the middle of the terminal. So I'll be <laughs> opening this a little bit more and I'll be running this command. MPX playwright 
test. I'm gonna be looking for all the tests under the folder out folder. Let me show you this. Basically what I'll be doing in the tests, it's a simple thing, okay? I created a couple of test files. Every single one is gonna be, well, it's gonna have a before each hook at the beginning of our, of our test suite, okay? It is gonna be visiting demo QA dash slash login. So it is gonna come here to the demo QA uh, page. It is gonna visit login. And you're gonna see that I have a logout button here. It is gonna be like the proof that it is login for, from, for this demo, okay? So let me show you this. Once you have the before each hook working, I'll be having a couple of tests per each file of the out folder, okay? So we're gonna have every single test starting with the word out. So I'll be fil filtering by the word out in the execution when I want to run our test file suite, I'm sorry. So you can see that I have the, the test file name at the beginning of each test, uh, test file one and test file one. And then we have the test case number one and the test case number two. The same for the test file two, but now I have the test file number two and test file number two over here, just to identify what is going on in the console. And then, um, I don't know, maybe in the reports as well, right? Beautiful. So inside of the test, I have a very simple uh, lines of code here. I'll, I'll be console lock the name of the test. Well, simple, right? And then I'm having, or I'm making sure with an assertion that the submit button, this one, have the word or has a text logout. It is gonna wait for a, for a couple of seconds just to show you in a screen that it is working fine. And then it is going to take in a screenshot. And the name of the screenshot is going to be something like this one. The name of the test file, then the test case that is working, then, or th that was executed actually, I'm sorry. Then the name of the browser that was executed if you remember in my projects, right? Let me show you this. I have a couple of um, execution, one in Chromium and one in Firefox. So it is gonna be saving on a screenshot per each browser, okay? And the way of how I, I am doing this is pretty simple. I'm just, well, requiring the browser name from, from the Playwright um, parameters over here, okay? I am just attaching the name of the browser in each screenshot instance okay the same for every single test file and every single test case it is the same thought process and the same execution okay so i'll be executing now the te the tests let me show you this i'm not gonna execute uh, using parallelism at the beginning just to show you that this is working fine and there is no error okay so mpx play rate test i'll be filtering by the out as I told you before, the name of the test. And then I'll be using only one work here just to make sure that this is not working in parallel. And then I'll be running it in parallel to make sure that it is working as well, okay? So let me show you this. Mm -hmm. Now it should be, well, it is running headless. Let me try again using a headed mode. I'm sorry, guys, okay? In order to run this in, in headless, in headed mode, it is just adding the flag headed if I'm not wrong, okay? There it is, let me show you this. The first is, is stuff that it, it is doing, it is doing the uh, login process. And then you can see that it is it has the login status. It is already uh, logged in in the application and the same for every single instance of the uh, tests. So it is sharing the login status among them and that's awesome. It is kind of a easy way to handle the authentication if you have a uh, well, a situation like this one to be used, right? This is beautiful. Uh, it is working fine. It is gonna work for Chromium and Firefox in this instance um, because both browsers require the same cookies and local storage properties. So it doesn't uh, make uh, a difference and it is gonna work fine. Uh, I discovered that when I'm executing this in headed mode, we're having a kind of an issues because loading issues, that's it. But if I run this in headless mode, it is gonna work fine, okay? So let me show you this. Um, let me show you this. I'll be using two workers, okay? I am not going to run this in headed mode. And the proof that this is working fine, right, is gonna be the report itself because we have assertions, 
but also screenshots. Okay, so let me show you this. I'll be running my tests using two workers, and then the proof is gonna be the report and the screenshots. Okay, I'm, I'll be using this in headless mode. Okay, there it is. We have the setup um, execution in progress, and then it start to execute the, the to it starts to execute the um, the different test files in the different test cases. Okay, you can see that for instance, the first test file, I'm sorry, the first test case of the test file number one is working fine in Chromium. Also, the test file number one, test case number two is working in Chromium, now Firefox, and so on. It is sharing the login status, as you can see over here, using the setup that we did before. Actually, I can run as well the report just to make sure that everything is working fine. Show report. And here we have a beautiful report that shows that the, the authentication by UI was working fine. And also every single test case uh, has the correct text of logout button that I was trying to test. So masters, let me know your feedback about this. I think it's a pretty interesting topic and I wanted to share this for free in YouTube because I think it's very easy to explain to you and I hope that you can learn something new. So masters, uh, thank you very much and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.